Hello and welcome to my show, Curly Sue's Plant Based Show. And today on the show, we have the lovely Laurie from Happy Clothing. Hi, Laurie. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Excellent. So for our viewers and listeners, tell them a bit about yourself, who you are and what it is that you do. Um, so I own a vegan clothing company designed and own it called uh, Vegan Happy Clothing. Um, and yeah, we set up um, a little clothing company when I went vegan and I couldn't find the sort of stuff I wanted to wear, really, because mm-hmm. um, I noticed this is a plant based show. And I'm very, very strong on, you know, there's a little bit of an argument about veganism versus plant based. And I don't think there is. I think you know, if you're plant-based, if you're doing meat-free Mondays, whatever, we're all going towards the right, all going towards the same goal. So, you know, I embrace, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what the difference is between vegan and plant-based, because to me, plant-based is vegan, but I don't know if there's an official um, explanation or official description of what plant-based is, because to me, it means vegan, but I yeah, it, but it, it again the point is it doesn't really matter because you know as far as we're concerned we don't really care as, as as vegan happy clothing anyway we don't really care because you know it's all about you know less animal suffering you know being healthier you know mm-hmm. less damage to the planet you know and also you know plant-based vegan food tastes so good <laughs> which yeah. is the main thing yeah. <laughs> you know, providing I, it's cooked by people who can cook because there there is still a stigma with vegan food people think no no it's not going to taste good it's going to be bland and I say well it will be bland if the person cooking it doesn't do a good job so yeah and I do find that when I go to restaurants sometimes um I find people when they try and do vegan food and they're not that great at it they 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 really don't understand about seasoning um but when you do you know what I mean? But when you get a re- and, and, and of course, when you go vegan you, uh, or plant based, you learn to cook again, don't you? You know, you use completely different ingredients because you want to, basically. You know, there's you discover all these vegetables in the supermarket and think, oh, I didn't even know what to do with that, but I'll try something out. And um, my, my big thing at the moment is um, trying to get as many people I know, that, um, meat eaters, yes. um, to come around for dinner and to make oh, them food. Oh you know, to make them food and we'll have a dinner party and I want them to like, you know, rate it. And they're like, you know, that's the best curry or that's definitely the best fish and chips I've ever had. Or, and I'm like, but you can't really tell the difference. And they're, it's just, it's just a bit of a game and it's, it's quite funny. (laughs) Yeah. We we always win. (laughs) Yeah. I had um, some friends over, I had like a girly sleepover and some some friends slept over and I gave them, um, my country of origin is Jamaica and we have this thing called bun, which it's kind of, the British equivalent will be like parking, you know, that kind of, yeah, yeah it's kind of like a, a raisin loaf kind of thing. So it's similar to that. And you have it with cheese. So I bought the Via Life cheese slices and none of my friends who came to the sleepover were vegan. So I just gave it to them. I didn't say anything and they were eating it. And then one of them stopped and she said, I'm confused because this tastes like cheese, but I know you wouldn't buy cheese. But this is cheese, isn't it? Or is it? I, I don't know. I'm confused. I said it's it's vegan cheese. And she went, oh, my goodness, it tastes like cheese. The craft cheese slices, it tastes just like it, basically. It's, it's, it's crazy because I think that's one of the hurdles for a lot of people. They go, I'd go vegan or I'd go plant-based, but I, I can't give up the cheese. Uh, but now vegan cheese has come on so much, hasn't it? Yeah. There's, there's um, one, our favourite at the moment, it's called Applewood. And it's oh. like a smoke a smoked one and it melts like so if people are making pizzas or whatever like that at home it melts so well but what it's got like a smoke applewood um oh, it's, applewood it, is the it, brand applewood is the brand and it's in tesco's oh. and things like that but but yeah it just melts really well but you know like you know plant-based vegan foods come on such a long way in such a short space of time yes so yeah amazing yeah but one of my experiences i want to share with you is sometimes when people get it wrong so i a couple of weeks ago, I was, um, I won't say what country it is because <laughs> it would kind of give away that they can't cook. I was in a particular country filming a TV series and they, it, it wasn't a vegan show, but it has vegan elements to the show. So they had vegan options and the catering on set. So when I went for my vegan option, they gave me rice and then some steamed vegetables. I thought, okay. 
And I said, um, what else goes with this? So they gave me some avocado. And I said, okay, what else? And they went, yeah, that's it. I said, but this, it's dry. There's no gravy or anything. They went, oh, no, no, no problem. They went to the steamed vegetables, took out some of the water and drizzled it on top. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like, <laughs> so yeah. That does not taste good. That that's not a thing. No, that's no. Yeah. Start again. Bye bye. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, not, not it. so, it's crazy. And I've not had an experience that. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when they said it, I was shocked. I thought because I thought he was going to go around the back and get something else, and when he kind of tilted the tray <laughs> with the steamed vegetables, I thought you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> which you could have done yourself of course anyway <laughs> uh, incidentally I did not have any more of their meals after that I just said, yeah. <laughs> I just said to the producer you know this just can't work for me I said you look I I cook I'm a vegan cook and we have other people on here who are chefs and stuff we'll just cook because it myself and my uh, colleague on the show he um He's a vegan chef. So I said, just said, you know what, for the vegan options, let's just cook lunch ourselves on the set because it's cooking. Yeah. Anyway. So we just had to do that. But yeah, That's it's it's quite interesting that particular country's um, approach to vegan cooking. It's like disastrous. I came back half a stone <laughs> lighter, which wasn't a problem really after lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know well actually funny enough you should say that I'm actually on a I won't say diet because I don't believe in diets but I'm on a you know not eating rubbish not eating my peanuts which I'm addicted to things like that just to try and cut my calorie intake because for some reason since going vegan four years ago I now seem to think that cat, um, chocolate cake and all those things that are yummy that are vegan don't have any <laughs> calories because they're plant. <laughs> So, so I put on a stone and a half and I should weigh myself. But I'm just like, I can have chocolate. I never before ate chocolate. I never eat, didn't eat cake. You know, it's really healthy, you know, but now I'm like, but it's plants. It's great. Have some. <laughs> so, it's just, the food is, I've got to say before I was not a foodie, I was not a foodie by any stretch of imagination. You know, I used to think food is fuel and that was it. Mm -hmm. Food didn't turn me on. Now, my dinner time is like the time I really look forward to. <laughs> and I, you know, I look forward to what I'm going to have and it's all fresh and I just love it. It's, I'm a real foodie now. Like I'm a real, like, and, and trying to better my skills because, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much I need to learn and so many foods that I think you can discover. Like there's foods in the supermarket. I don't even know what to do with them yet, but I, I'm probably going to aim to go around and do something with them. Do you know what I mean? I think, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so your business, Vegan Happy Clothing, yeah. tell me about how it started, what do you sell, what is happy clothing? Yeah, so so like I say, it was just because I couldn't find the sort of clothes I wanted to wear. So for me, when I went vegan, I was just um, shocked that I hadn't done it before, to be honest. I, I got to 50 and I was still, I hadn't seen the light, if you like. Mm -hmm. You know, I was doing, causing so much harm. And then, you know, I wanted to wear although I am 50, I wanted to still look, you know, on trend. I wanted to look, mm -hmm. you know, classy as well. And I just felt there was a real niche for people that could wear a subtle, like our logos are all subtle. Um, they're just enough to like spark the conversation. They're, yes. I'll show you, actually, I've got one on. It's like this top mm -hmm. and it's got like a tiny little logo. Yes, I've got the beanie hat. I've got your beanie. Oh, you've got the beanie. Yeah. And so yeah. the whole idea is that, you know, you don't necessarily shout it out, but, you know, it is noticeable. And, you know, people that wear our clothes get stopped a lot in the supermarket because they're like, um, the one two days ago was, um, I'm making um, a winter salad. What olive oil would be best on that to bring out the flavours? Because you're a vegan, you should know, sort of thing. Okay. So. So, so like the, the thing is, it just sparks conversations. People say, yeah, I didn't know you're vegan, but it means it doesn't overshadow the outfit. So they can still go out, you know, wearing what they want to wear. So, you know, our range covers, you know, T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, jackets, bags. You know, we're going into uh, like, you know, canvas trainers in the summer. And mm -hmm. yeah, just and we're starting to manufacture our own stuff now only after four years. So oh. it's a big year. For, yeah, it's a big year for us. And they're going to be um, cotton dresses yeah we've had some mm -hmm. cotton dresses made I know so. if you need any models beautiful yeah for like myself, sure please let yeah, me know I'm available for sure. <laughs> we would love you to model we would love you to model yes yes I've, I've also got pardon no, sorry. no carry on 
I've also got, it's like a blanket with sleeve things, I think it's called. What's it called? A poncho, is it? A yeah. poncho thing. It's like a grey, fluffy thing. I've got one of those. Oh, the Sherpa. Yes, yes. Yeah, the Sherpa. Yeah. Oh, honestly, um, they kept, we have a few customers in the Scottish Highlands and they both lost their power earlier this year. And they're sending me pictures and they said that was the, they were the only things that kept them warm because they had no uh -huh. eating for like, like seven to ten days, I think it was. Oh, gosh. Wow. yeah it's 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 crazy yeah so there's pictures of them like just keeping them warm so yeah they're oh. really good Super. oh good so how did you come to um what was your aha moment when it came to starting the business what made you think right that's it I'm gonna do it and um, it, it was just really I I just wanted to sh like they say there's a joke about vegans that you know, when a vegan's coming, because they'll tell you four miles down the road that they're approaching. And it's sort of like true. Do you know I mean, we, like, as soon as we go vegan, we want to go, oh, do you know I'm a vegan? Have I told you yet I'm a vegan? So that's our joke sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, so I sort of like wanted to like, like talk about it. And um, but I didn't want to be too offensive and in your face. And that's when I just thought, I'm just going to make some clothes. And I never expected it to take off. I just thought, you know, I'll pack a few bags up a week and, you know, it'll be like pin money and just tick over. But really quite quickly, we started, you know, do, doing some quite good stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, and the most amazing thing is connecting with customers. And, you know, our big thing is customer pictures and testimonials and stuff. So there was, it was just, I couldn't find what I wanted to wear. And I, I wanted to fly the flag, if you like. Yeah. Oh, That's lovely. Really, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that is great. So if somebody else wanted to start a vegan business, what tips would you give them? Um, so um, it's really easy to do your own website now. I mean, I would say keep costs low. Mm -hmm. um, I use a platform called Wix and I design my websites myself. They're made really easy. But now with marketplaces, there's quite a lot of marketplaces like Crazy Bean and other ethical marketplaces like World Vegan Store or World Vegan Shop, I think that's just set up. Mm -hmm. So many marketplaces where you don't need your own website. You can actually get your products in those marketplaces without having your own website. You don't need to have that. You can just have orders emailed to you. So, you know, in, in terms of people setting up their own vegan business, they don't need a huge outlay. They just need the idea really. So um, if they wanted to do, I don't know, vegan dog biscuits, you know, there are marketplaces they could just manufacture and sell them for a small commission. So, you know, to keep costs low so they can test their idea before they spend a lot of money. And then if they know it's going to work, then they can they can go the whole hog, really. What are those platform calls again? Um, there's one called Crazy Bean. So it's crazy-bean.com. Mm -hmm. And we're on that. And then there's a new one set up called World Vegan Shop. Um, but there are well, quite a yeah, few. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's quite good. Yeah, crazy-bean.com. Yes. Um, and the other one is World Vegan Shop, who have just set up now. But there's, there's quite a few marketplaces, and they offer different commissions. Um, no. I, think some of the, I think some of the commissions are really high, to be honest. Um, but, you know, someone like Crazy Bean will offer certain packages that covers um, social media, you know, mm -hmm. a, you know, marketing for people. So, you know, if they're starting, I think Crazy Bean have got a level where um, they will do marketing for you for a certain percentage, which if you're a small brand, that really helps, mm -hmm. you know, because you're, you're not paying anything unless you've made a sale. So, right. you know, you, you pay that commission when you've made the sale. So mm -hmm. it allows you to not have to spend a lot of money. So, and I'll tell you what happened in COVID. This is what happened quite a lot. A lot of people, COVID was good for one thing. I saw, and oh, also Etsy, you've got Etsy as well. Um, Etsy is fantastic for vegan small brands. So Etsy is another great marketplace. Mm -hmm. And COVID was, COVID was fantastic for um, Etsy, for example, and vegan marketplaces because people had a lot of time or they, um, they it sounds awful, but you know, if they had time because they'd lost their job or time because they were furloughed mm -hmm. or they wanted extra money or they just had, you know, they thought, right, now's the time for me to do my idea. Etsy so many new brands went on there the marketplaces so many new brands went on because I think people thought I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna mm -hmm. do it and you know for me it, that was amazing do you know what I mean like I love going to marketplaces and buying our stuff I don't want to go to big chains and I think there's been a big shift towards that we like buying from small independents now I think um, yeah. so yeah et Etsy is another great one but it means that people can test their product without spending a lot of money that's a great so I know some of our viewers and listeners will be asking, what makes clothing vegan? Because, because you're not eating it, some people think, well, aren't all clothing vegan? 
So if you would like to explain that for them, please. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good question, actually. Um, so a lot of clothing is, you know, actually vegan. So, you know, if you look at anything, and as long as it's made from cotton and it's made from like, you know, non-silk thread, that would be, you know, non-animal material. So that would be vegan. Yeah. Um, however, when we look at what a vegan product is, we look at... Um, you know, workers' wages, you know, if it's like, you know, fast fashion, you know, we would say that we want, you know, um, we look at, you know, how the cotton's produced, you know, water consumption, you know, we buy from sustainable manufacturers or um, Peter approved, which means that, you know, we look at everything along that whole production cycle, really, including like, you know, women representation in the workplace, you know, um, mm -hmm. fair wages, things like that. We try and look at it the whole, the whole thing as one. Um, but, you know, you're absolutely right. A lot of clothes um, are actually vegan because as long as they, they don't have an animal, ele, animal product element, you know, they don't, they're not silk, they're not wool, they're not leather, then they are still vegan. So you can actually, you know, a lot of vegans also, I mean, I'm, I'm also one of these people that will shop in charity shops, you know, mm -hmm. charity shops are great. So, and we also like as vegans, we like to, you know, upcycle. So, you know, the fact that you're going to wear something that someone has worn before with love, I mean, that's actually a really cool concept. So, you know, we endorse that as well. You know, like we we re gift our clothes. So, um, yeah. So, so, so a lot of clothing is vegan. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, what aspects of it, apart from the the fibers, is it just the fibers that makes it not vegan, like the wool, the silk, and so forth? Yeah. So it would be anything that could cause harm to an animal. So you know, we 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 eschew anything that would cause harm to an animal. So um, a lot of people say that leather is a byproduct of the meat industry, but it's not really you know that there, it's it's just if we if we can reduce demand for leather for wool you know for everything then then we're going in the right direction so what's leather is a byproduct you know it's we need to um reduce consumption of you know leather of meat you know of dairy of all of those things to you know really um you know aim towards a vegan world that's actually sustainable because as you know we're, we're heading right down the pan which is just unfortunate but but yeah no it's 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 wool really we don't have any anim animal products okay so with regards wool um just to explain for those who might not know some people could say well sheeps wool comes from sheeps and then you shear the sheep and the wool comes off anyway yeah. so how does that not make it so, vegan so just yeah, no, absolutely. A really good question. Um, so sheep naturally, if sheep were left to their own devices or had been left to their own devices, sheep don't need to be sheared. They're like us, you know, they'll molt, they'll do what they need to do, uh, like dogs, they'll molt and do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. Sheep now have been genetically modified to grow wool. So right. the reason why it's a byproduct, so it's another form of abuse, really. The reason mm -hmm. why um, they grow is it's like um, uh slightly digressing but a chicken a broiler chicken is killed mm -hmm. in 40 days because the, it's given steroids and growth hormones to grow fat quickly the same as a sheep is modified to grow wool quickly so um that's what it will do and hence it needs sheeping at uh, shearing about twice a year which again is really so it's a byproduct but it's a byproduct deliberately to feed the carpet industry and things right. like that and jumpers so it's again it's sort of like um, a systematic abuse so that's why we won't wear it. Yeah. So it's been genetically modified to do that. If you, but I mean, it's difficult because the sheep now that are a, a range and breed, they are genetically modified to do that. But, you know, like if you have sheep that haven't been, they will only grow the wool that they can cope with. You know, you've got Highland cattle and stuff. They, they don't need clipping in the summer and stuff like this. Do you know no. what I mean? Yeah. They're left alone. Just yeah. if we leave nature alone, it doesn't need any, any maintenance. Right. Okay. That's good to know. So moving on to a couple other questions, who or what inspires you? Oh, my goodness. Um, right. OK. Um, I'm really involved with something called Camp Beagle. And okay. Camp Beagle is um, it's an activist camp outside a place called NBR Acres in Huntington. And they breed puppies for labs to do to be tested in labs. So um, we, I'm really involved with that. And the people that inspire me are everyone in that campaign that are striving towards a goal with, with almost like with no end in sight. We've, in, in, we've got the objective in mind and we're going towards that goal, but they're doing it with such faith and such strength. Every single person involved in this campaign is what inspires me to keep going. 
So what is the campaign for exactly? It's called, it's, um, it's Camp Beagle. So there's a puppy farm, the UK's only puppy farm, actually. Mm -hmm. um, puppy farming is illegal now in the All UK, right. but there, there is one puppy farm in um, Huntington called MBR Acres. It's um, part of Marshall Bioresources and they breed beagle puppies for animal testing. So right. um, we're trying to close it down because animal testing is uh -huh. just illegal. Now. right that's so, the bit yeah. I didn't hear because oh I sorry yeah so it's just that yeah so and it's just really like you know it's just such a tiny I mean, if, if I explain the, the um the sacrifice um for eight months now people have been camping at the side of the road even in the wow. snow yeah so they've been camping in the snow the rain taking cold showers in the woods you know it's just incredible just to try and stop suffering yeah so everyone at Camp Beagle inspires me right um and is there any other people, you know, in history, celebrities or any famous people oh. in history that inspire you as well? Oh, my gosh. Um, I think I, I'm inspired by myself by not giving up because I've had quite a few blows in my life. Okay. So I inspire myself because I've not really had a lot of inspiration in my life. Right. Um, my daughter inspires me because she has had a lot of a lot of obstacles her way, her life, and she really inspires me to keep a smile on her face. Um, mm. Other people, um, I have my people like Richard Branson, who, who have to seem to, uh, I don't know, just go for it. I really admire people that just go for it. Yes. You know, people that, I don't know, have an idea and just do it. I, I'm really like inspired by that. You know, Anita Roddick, obviously another massive pioneer. Yes. Um, yeah. So and, any, anyone really that just is prepared to put their neck on the block, really. There's, mm -hmm. there's so so many, do you know what I mean? And there's so many actors, there's just so many, yeah. But my, my daughter's probably the main one. Okay. So if you're going to eat out, what are your kind of favourite vegan places to go to? to eat oh, out? right. This is a really good one. Yeah. So in Worcester, I live near Worcester and there's a place called um, Be The Change Foods and their food oh. is insane. It's just... Because the problem with vegan food as well, as you, as you know, when I see people put pictures up of their food sometimes and it's like a hash brown with some beans and a sausage and I'm like, there's no green on that plate. No. You know, it's not, it's not balanced. It's not really good for you. It's, you know, don't go for vegan junk food just because it's vegan. You know, like actually mm -hmm. look at all the stuff. There's so much food out there. So Be The Change Foods in Worcester is just insane. And the next time I go um, is going to be shredded crispy not beef um but they do things like loaded doner kebab and all this sort of oh. stuff but like proper big like thai feasts and indian feasts and stuff like that but my favorite probably is wagamama so oh. wagamama has got its own menu with about 60 things on it and it's just epic and fresh and it's just and it also is not hugely expensive so yeah wagamama yeah. is my favorite place i think it's wagamama who does the, the vegan katsu curry yes Very and they do well. they do do you have the hot one no no uh, they, they brought the hot one out for me first time I had it and I was like I can't eat this it's so hot <laughs> yeah no 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 I'm not a fire in your mouth kind of person I can take yeah, wild but hot uh -uh. No, no. it was just it was just too much I was like, I can't eat it. <laughs> but talking about healthy um vegan food and vegan junk food there is still a misconception that people have that because a particular food item is vegan, that automatically makes it healthy. So I was speaking to somebody once and they said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to try and eat more healthy. I'm going to have some vegan food. And I said, OK, all vegan food is not healthy. They went, isn't it? I said, no. I said, let me give you an example. If you have chips fried in vegetable oil, deep fried, that's vegan. But there's nothing healthy about that. And they were oh yeah I see what you mean so there's still that oh yeah because it's vegan it's healthy I think no nope, there's a ton 101 different vegan junk foods most of which are very delicious but they are not by any stretch of the imagination good for you no exactly and I think that's the thing you learn when you go vegan is about which I wasn't doing very well before was all about the food balancing you know making sure you're getting the you know the right nutrients um you know all the time across each meal so you know I plan the meal so I've got you know the right the right balances really um and I'm aiming to do a course on it as well and a vegan nutrition course an online one just to just to yeah learn more about micronutrients and stuff like that I don't know anything about micronutrients mm -hmm. so um but yeah no that's the thing is like 
you know, for example, I just said already myself, I eat chocolate and cake, which I never ate before. You know, for some reason, I think now it's vegan. It's OK for me. And it's, of course, it's not. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> not, if, not as much as I was eating anyway. So, okay. yeah. But no, you're right. So where can people find you on social media, your website? Feel free to shamelessly plug yourself now. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so we're at veganhappyclothing.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So we have an American site as well, but, you know, which is dot com. But yeah, veganhappyclothing.co.uk. Um, yeah. We'd be great to see new people. OK. And social media. Are you on social media? Yeah. Um, all our social media. Our Instagram is, is at veganhappyclothing. Facebook is at veganhappyclothing. OK. Yeah. Fabulous. And we love new, we love we love new followers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. So do I. Yes. Yeah. So, it's been lovely speaking to you today. Um, wonderful. Um, best of wishes for your the future of your business. It's love. I love the name Vegan Happy Clothing. It's like reminds thank me of the song, the song "Shining Happy People Holding Hands." <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you so much. It's been wonderful speaking to you today and I'm sure our paths will cross again very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.